And you're watching another episode of Anderson's TV. And to be honest with you, I think you should ask yourself, just how many episodes of Anderson's TV do you really need to watch in a single day? <laughs> I mean, haven't you got something better to do? The answer is all of them. Like, go and get some fresh air, perhaps get back to doing some work. Uh, anyway. Well, I'm if you play I'm these guitars, watching, really. but the thing is, if you play these guitars, you're going to be doing nothing but sitting in a room learning how to play all the notes. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Anyway, so Squire, our good friend Squire, uh, who, if you're new to this uh, guitar thing, uh, Squire is the, um, he's like the baby brother of Fender, isn't it? Or baby sister? Yeah, it could be either. Could be either or. Um, it's kind of the, it's the brand that Fender historically used to do their sort of lower priced stuff. But more recently, it's been more confusing, hasn't it? It has been. Because it's kind of like, you can get cheap Fenders and dear Squires. Yeah, and yeah. It's there's, like, been you know, some, there's been some sections where a Squire may have been more expensive. Uh, anyway. So, the latest uh, offering from Squire is their Contemporary Series. This is new for 2018. Um, this is added into the range, so you've got kind of classic vibe doing the vintage thing, mm. Bullet doing the affordable thing, Affinity doing kind of like a bit better than Bullet, mm. and now Contemporary doing a kind of, I guess quality-wise, it's sort of somewhere in between Affinity and classic vibe, but mm. it's a more um, modern, Vibe. Yeah, for sure. What you got there? Well, do you remember the? Do you, I'll tell you what. What you got there? What you, do you got there? Do you remember the Showmaster? I do. That's what this reminds me of. Yeah, because well, it's got that whole of. that whole vibe to it. So obviously, yeah, these guitars don't really have names. They're explained by what their physical features are. Sarah, John, Michelle, Michelle, John, Sarah, John, Charlie, Michelle. Charlie, and, obviously, uh, Andrew. Char okay, so there you go. So this is a contemporary HH. Floyd Rose, active. HH H for? Henry Hazel. Henry um, Hazel. Humbucker, humbucker. HH, active. Humbucker, humbucker. So, chances are, if you're looking at Squire guitars, you may, uh, this may be, you know, one of the, like, early guitars that you've bought could be a second guitar maybe hmm. so active pickups you know you, you you're diving into the realms of the well-known companies you're diving into, the, diving realms, into the realms of well-known companies such as emg and stuff like that but these are squire's own version of an active pickup the most famous set of active pickups the emg 85 yeah. um, 81 81 kind of what is where they've just gained the preamp up massively but the idea originally of active pickups no i'm holding this one because it hasn't but <laughs> the idea one. was to actually use smaller magnets so it didn't have the pull on the string to increase the sustain of the string and then you use the preamp to boost the signal because the the pickup itself with the smaller magnets didn't generate much signal in itself and then of course what companies like emg did was they started to voice the preamp to be suitable for different Amazing. genres of guitar amazing uh the other thing i think on these uh active pickups or certainly on emg ones anyway is instead of having pole pieces there's a bar so again let's be honest with you i don't remember Jimi hendrix going yeah when i bend my strings and it moves away from the pole piece i can hear the uh <laughs> tone dropping out like that but the the idea is is that because you've got a constant bar going across there is no way regardless of whether you bend strings or whatever for the string to move away from a being above the pole piece. So there you are. Now I know what an active pickup yeah, does. No problem at all. Floyd Rose is a man yeah. called Floyd Rose, believe it or not. He's a professional boxer. Uh, yes. <laughs> Floyd yeah, Rose recently had a big a... fight with Conor McGregor, didn't he? He did. And uh, 
Uh, no, he didn't really. Uh, well, he did, sort of. It's just a double locking trem system where you can go up or go down. Yeah, really kind of designed back in the what was it late 70s, early 80s for, for, you know, essentially when trem systems, you know, standard Fender style trem systems, just if you gave it a lot of abuse, would not stay in tune. And so the Floyd Rose system was designed to, to perhaps uh, improve tuning stability, give players, you know, a bit more access to, you know, dive bomb, pull up, whatever like that. This is a um, one of the licensed Floyd Rose, which is a um, the, the full fat. Floyd Rose is mm. almost as much to buy as this actual guitar is, mm. but you can buy like, you know, Chinese licensed copies of it and that's what that is. Looks cool. Looks good. Uh, what you got, three-way or five-way? Volume, way? tone, three-way selector switch. Do you know how yeah. I knew it would be three-way? Because as far as I'm aware, you can't coil, split an active humbucker. There you go. At least I've never seen an active humbucker that you can coil, split. <laughs> So that's the neck. This is the middle, which I can assume is both pickups at the same time. And then the bridge. Me like it a lotty. Yeah, it's not too bad. Stomp on something then and let's go crazy. Really good. And just so you guys know, we've intentionally picked slightly more affordable amps than perhaps we've used in the past because we, uh, I know we get criticized for putting affordable guitars through unbelievably expensive amps. So Joss has got a Boss Katana 50, yes. and I've got a Fender Bass Breaker 15. Mm. Um, the other feature that you'll see on all the contemporary series, and again, perhaps your, it's probably more your bag than mine, Joss, but they've got a much flatter fretboard than yeah. a conventional Strat, haven't so they? So was it 12 inch or was it compound radius? 12 inch. So it's 12 inch radius on this. Yeah, so it is It is very flat, so you can get the, the faster playing and the, the big bends and vibrato going. Good man, good man. Reverse headstock. Yeah, on this model. Uh, looks kind wicked. of made famous, I guess, when Jimmy started playing upside down guitars and then everyone went, that is cool. Yep. How do I get the, how do I get to be as cool as Jimmy? And, and then all of a sudden, the, and then, yeah, and then, no, <laughs> and then no one ever was. But we did at least manage to get the reverse headstock. Matching headstock um, as well, the colors, the matching colors, really, really cool. Uh, obviously, this, this uh, garish red sticker that you can see on all these guitars. In fact, all Fender products at the moment seem to be coming with these big stickers are removable. But that's because Fender are plugging, um, very heavily their online lessons, Fender Play, which actually I had a look at the other day, and they've spent a bucket load of money on that. Uh, and the end result is actually, it's quite a nice to watch tuition okay. <laughs> series. On, nice and easy. Uh, uh, yeah, um, of which if you buy any Fender product, I think you get a 30 day free login period. But anyway, there we are. That's the Contemporary HH. Yes. Uh, I am holding the Contemporary uh, I don't know, HSS, I guess this is. Yeah, so definitely. The, the main difference is here. I've got uh, passive pickups now, so conventional pickups, two single coils and a humbucker, a, uh, a two-point trem system, kind of looks like a sort of a more affordable version of what you get on the American Pro Strat. Same flat fretboard, 12-inch radius fretboard. Again, if you're wondering what on earth we're talking about with radiuses and all this kind of stuff, it's about how much curvature is on the fretboard. The flatter the fretboard generally means the lower you can get the action. Um, so if you're a super, super fast, light fingered shredder, like Joss's, you know, flat fretboards tend to be a little bit easier to play. Um, yes. Um, my guitar sounds, I've got a five way switch, so I've got a, an array of tones. <laughs> Yeah. 
you're going to hear how much hotter the Massive humbucker is. Massive difference compared yeah. to going from the so, singles mm. to the humbucker. So when I stomp on a gain pedal, it's got some big, big, dirty tones in there. Mm. Um, as far as I'm aware, this one is only available with a rosewood fretboard, as is this one. What have I got? Regular tuners on the back of here. Uh, it's a kind of a regular weight for a Strat, I guess. It is a thin, um, or like a modern C profile neck. So again, if you're uh, worried about, you know, if the neck's going to be too thick or too thin or whatever, it's a very conventional modern Strat neck. I believe yeah. yours is the same. Oh yeah, it? most definitely. Yeah. If we swap over to the other guitars, You'll notice that the one that Joss has just picked up looks very similar to mine. It's in fact just the same thing, but with different pickups on it. And the one that I've picked up looks very different. Uh, again, if you're a new starter to this guitar world, uh, I feel like I'm teaching you to suck eggs today. I apologize about that. No, it's... Um, <laughs> but it is... Uh, a Telecaster. Uh, the only difference I would say on this particular Telecaster is it has the slightly contemporary feature of a tummy cut. A belly cut. A belly cuts, what they call it. So it does feel a little bit more comfortably contoured to the body than a traditional Telecaster would. Matching headstock in terms of the colour. Again, 12 inch flat radius fretboard. Two humbuckers. No coil tapping or anything like that. And strung through the body. So the strings go in here over the top of the bridge, tune it up. And again, typically with a, a string through fixed bridge as opposed to a trem, you probably get a little bit more oomph and sustain out the guitar. Okay, so yeah, I told you a little bit about my Telecaster. Now, please, Mr. Joss, tell me a little bit about your Stratocaster. This is a HH contemporary version with a standard trem, like non-active humbuckers. Yeah. Um, volume, tone, three-way selector switch. Um, still three-way again. It is still a three-way. Disappointing. So they could have coil tapped that, but they, they chose could've. not to. Oh, well. Um, white you could wood, probably mod that. Uh, maple fretboard. Obviously, maple neck. It's got that whole satin vibe going on with it, both fretboard and neck. Um, matching headstock in this pearlescent white. It does look like, when you get the certain sheen on it, it looks like it's got a really small amount of flake in it. It's really cool. Is it just um, me, or does the telly neck feel marginally fatter than the strat necks? I mean, without I totally actually holding it myself. Well, hold it yourself, look. There you are. Ooh. Yeah, it does. It feels a little like bit maybe. marginally, marginally fatter. But it might be just because you said it now, and I've got that. Yeah, in your head I know. And I, like, yeah, you put it in your head, and you're like, oh, okay. It feels that it might be though. Um, obviously, really flat fret, boom, twelve inch radius again, same as on the other models. But yeah, that's about it, really. I like it. Well, I'll give you some tones, clean tones. Only three settings on here, so dead easy. Here we go. <laughs> Doesn't Sounds think. good. It's fat sounding. Pretty damn like good. It. Yep. How cool. about yours? I like it. Neck. Neck. Middle. Middle. And then bridge. Stomp on the good pedal, Joss! All oh, right, Lee! <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> right, Joss and I will jam out in a minute if we can hold it together for another five minutes. Um, so, you're probably wondering how much these guitars are. Uh, so before Joss and I jam out, uh, just quickly run through that. So the Floyd Rose model, which comes in a couple of different colours, no left-handed model in the Floyd Rose, uh, but these are going to cost you about £400. And the three regular, you know, the, the two strats and the Telecaster here, these are going to cost you somewhere around about the 320 mark. So there we go. Well done, Joss. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Ha ha ha!